Hello guys, Hyperion here back with another video. Today we're taking a look at the Cuboid Necromancer set. This is one of two upcoming ST sets, the other being the Nordic Knight. I'll be covering that very soon. First off, for the people who don't know, special theme sets are unique sets where you collect items from the same theme to get cool bonuses. Collect all four pieces of a themed set and your character transforms into a cool 16x16 sprite. These items drop in an orange bag, the designated ST bag. As far as drop locations go for the pieces of the Cuboid Necromancer set, they'll first be limited to the Story of War campaign. This is simply a paid campaign where the only progression is... After a month or two, these will be available to everyone as normal drops in the realm. My speculation is that the Cuboid Necromancer will drop in the third dimension. It's pretty obvious, being that it's very cubey like the dungeon itself. The third dimension is interesting I must say, but its drops were a little underwhelming. None of the white bags there left a mark for me, except maybe the cloak. Do you guys want to see a review of these three white bags? Let me know in the comments. So yeah, to have this set drop there is a good idea. Anyways, let's get to the set. The Cuboid Necromancer. When you equip all four pieces, you transform into this cube-like sprite. It looks pretty cool. It has a striking resemblance to the Cuboid Matriarch from the third dimension. Okay, this is definitely going to be dropping from that dungeon. I'll put a pinned comment and update the description as soon as the drop locations are released. Let's check the equips. First up, we have the Squareroid Staff. It does a small 50 to 60 damage and only has 6 range, but it has a huge 150% rate of fire. The shots have the added perk of ignoring the defense of the enemy and passing through obstacles. Time to see the shots. That's a very unique shot pattern. They spread outwards and linger for a little bit before zooming and connecting well at the end. The rate of fire is crazy on this item. I kind of get this turret vibe when shooting. I forget that I can move and shoot. It really makes you feel like a stationary turret. And when you do move, it reminds me of those big flying worms from the Avengers. Sort of, kinda. What's interesting is there's a huge delay before your shot actually lands at its destination. I mean, look at this. Okay, over here I jiggle my mouse a little and then move it after. Then the shots do that a whole second afterwards. It feels like the shots are trying to copy the path your mouse takes. That's how slow it is. You're gonna need to plan your shots way ahead of time to land them. On to the godlands. It's alright. The gods are dying at a decent rate and the shots aren't too hard to land. Actually, I'm gonna be honest. They're a little hard to land. But look, purple numbers. Let's hop over to the DPS calculator. Wow. This is actually really good. For an armor piercing weapon, this is surprisingly powerful. Armor piercing weapons ignore the defense of the enemy. Some enemies have really high defense, thus take much less damage from normal weapons. For example, a normal staff does 100 damage to an enemy with zero defense. But if the enemy has 75 defense, the staff will only do 25 damage. For armor piercing weapons with purple damage numbers, they completely ignore this, so they're relatively more effective the higher the defense gets. Examples of high defense mobs are the Avatar of the Forgotten King, the Stone Guardians, and Oryx. This explains why this staff is a straight line on the DPS graph. The higher the defense, the less this staff gives a shit. It beats the tier 12 cosmic staff all the way. Tier 12 weapons are the benchmark for average DPS, so we have some impressive power here. Now to compare it with the two best staves in the game, the superior and the tier 14 staff. It still holds up pretty well. It beats the tier 14 staff past only 26 defense, and the superior past 38 defense. 26 to 38 defense is kind of low. There are heaps of mobs which have more defense than that. So if you can land your shots well, this weapon will pop off. I can't believe it. This stuff is up there among the best staves in the game. Like, it's definitely not the best, but it's pretty good. There is a nasty drawback which is the slow shot speed. It makes it pretty hard to hit enemies that move erratically. But if you do get the hang of it, this thing will melt most enemies. And remember, the shots pass through obstacles, which is handy when killing enemies in the forest, where there are trees everywhere. You can simply ignore them now. Next up, the cubic frame skull. Yeah, that's a cube. That's right. Remember, this set is for necromancers and their ability equip is a skull. This is a skull of a cube. Possibly one we killed. You heartless monster. Cubic resurrection. Summon a decaying cube to aid you in combat. Oh, cool. All right. So we aren't exactly cube murderers. Actually, wait, we are. It's dead and we keep dragging it from the grave to summon it and then it dies again. Oh my god, I feel bad. Cool. I like how the cube decays over time visually too. You can really see the pain the cube is going through. So, what does it do? It zaps enemies within around a 5 tile radius, which is not much, so you do need to get a little closer to the enemies. An interesting thing I notice is as the cube decays, the damage decays too. It starts off by dealing 225 damage 5 times, then it does 200 damage, then 175 damage, and finally it goes down to 150 damage. That adds up to a total of 3750 damage. 
That's quite a lot. It has the potential to kill up to three gods from the godlands before it fully decays. Kind of like the cranium ring. Actually, this is very similar to the other summoning ability, the demon lord's skull. The item also spawns a zapping minion that happens to do 3750 damage as well. The difference is that skull has no cooldown, so you can summon a bunch of minions whereas you can only have one decaying cube out at a time. This cube summoning effect is just an additional effect. The base skull does a whopping 600 damage. That's more than the Memento Mori which was known to do a reliable 400 damage. This is now the hardest hitting skull in the game, especially when combined with the cube minion it summons. Each time you use this skull, it'll amount to a whopping 4350 damage. To get an idea of this number, I'll kill the boss from the snake pit with just a skull. Now that's solid. It even has life steal on top of that, healing for 50 health on every target the initial blast hits. And it gives an additional 5 passive defense. So not only is it a great offensive skull, it's decent for survival too. Now you may have noticed these weird shots coming out of me. That's the robe. The polygonal garbs. Polygonal garbs. There, I said, I said it both ways. One of them is bound to be correct. On taking damage, cast a squarrier of projectiles that move outwards and lingers. Wait, is that even a real word? With the full set on, these projectiles last twice as long and do double the damage. The robe stats are 10 defense, 30 MP and 5 dexterity, which is not really that good, but the selling point is the passive ability it has. So whenever we get here, we emit these 4 shots. With only a 2 second cooldown, this will be up a lot, and from my experience in the godlands, these shots do help take out the gods, dealing 800 damage each with the full set. If you manage to land all 4 shots with this, you'll deal a total of 3200 damage. It's not too hard to utilize this robe. It's great for kiting enemies when you're bombarded by a lot of shots. For the final piece of the set, we have the Q-Band. This accessory gives 100 HP and 5 dexterity, with a passive ability of healing you for 100 HP when you shoot while in combat. This has a cooldown of 20 seconds. So we're in combat over here, I shoot, and poof! It's a nice perk. It's very comparable to the popular Ring of the Pyramid. The item gives 100 HP, 4 attack, and 4 defense. Both of these items provide the same HP. The Q-Band gives 5 dexterity instead of 4 attack, which I think is a better bonus, and for its perk of healing for 100 health, it's about the same as having 4 defense, if not better. So overall this may be a better Pyra. So now with the full set combined, we end up with 900 HP, 385 MP, 75 attack, 45 defense, 50 speed, 75 dexterity, 55 vitality, and 75 wisdom. A balanced spread. This set has good survivability giving 900 HP and 45 defense, combined with our little ring and skull heals. And it's a good damage dealer with that powerful squareroid staff and all the mess the skull and robe brings. The set altogether holds out pretty well, but what about the items on their own? The staff is top tier, although landing the shots is a bit hard. The skull is a great option for damage, while also having the ability to heal. The robe is alright, but really that perk isn't the most amazing thing. I'd still use a tier 14 or 15 robe over this. The ring? It's arguably a better pyra. It's very nice that an ST ring is finally decent, cause most of the time we have this junk. Overall, my final verdict on this set is... It's good. It's, it, it's really cool, and it's well designed. Very powerful too. You can consider this an endgame set. I really appreciate how unique these sets are getting. They change up the gameplay significantly. Thank you guys for watching. Wow.